After Iran's mass strike on Israel, the world's eyes are looking at Israel's intentions. Earlier today, explosions were heard near Iranian airbase in Isfahan province. Unnamed US officials said Israel launched the attack. Israel remains mum about it. Israel has earlier said it plans to produce a significant response. So today's strikes may be an opening to larger strikes. This video will explore the weapon systems Israel might use if it decides to strike at Iran proper. We will cover the Air Force's options, types of jets used, capabilities and range. We'll explore the most promising Israeli bombs and other air weapons. And we will then analyze if Israel has any other weapons to be used, not necessarily air-launched ones. Finally, which of all those might have the best chance of success? Iran's attack on Israel relied on its strong suits. Iran couldn't dream of successfully approaching Israel with a bomb-laden aircraft. So it didn't do that. It used missiles and drones. It's an area it worked on for a few decades now. So it's no wonder it went that route. Israel, however, doesn't have that many long-range missiles, especially large ones that are not constrained by air launch requirements. Instead, Israel has for decades cultivated air power as the main source of power projection. It has one of the strongest, most numerous and most technologically advanced air forces in the Middle East. So if Israel does decide to strike hard at Iran, it may choose to use its aircraft. Distance to Iran is considerable, but doable. The bigger issue is what sort of targets Israel might want to strike. That's outside the scope of this video, but to simplify, if Israel was to reach to the middle of Iran, a thousand miles away, it would have a very wide choice of targets plausibly satisfying its needs. The problem with such locations is that they are over 400 miles inside Iran's borders. Sure, Israel has some standoff weapons, but some issues remain. A. Most standoff weapons may not provide a lot of extra range, meaning Israeli planes would still be exposed inside Iran. And B. The number of larger weapons available may not be that high. Israel's longest reaching missile is Popeye Turbo. Allegedly, an air-launched variant exists in addition to a submarine-launched one. But that just illustrates the problem. Said missile was never seen, so there's no way of really knowing how large it is. And no way to deduce its range or warhead from its size. At the high end of the estimate, it could be a Tomahawk-sized weapon. For example, the US tested integration of the Tomahawk on an F-4 fighter jet. So something like an F-15 should be able to carry such a missile. Possibly even two if drop tanks and thus range is to suffer. If it was made to be a little smaller at around one ton, even the F-16 might be able to carry a pair. One can only guess what sort of performance such missiles might have, but comparing it to other similar sized missiles of similar era, anything between a 400 and a thousand miles of range and up to a half a ton worth of a warhead is still plausible. It's of course unknown how many such missiles Israel might have, but given Israel's experiences so far, it's plausible the figure is closer to a few hundred rather than over a thousand. Israel simply did not have the need for so many cruise missiles in its past wars. And a potential attack on Iran was plausibly not planned to be massive in scope. Cruise missiles like the Tomahawk are also vulnerable, but more on that later. While some strikes may have started, Israel announced their response would be significant. Now it remains to be seen when it'll happen. Ground News is sponsoring this video, and using their app I took a look at how various media sources are covering that announcement. Ground News aggregates the media headlines, which is helpful, sure, but then it goes beyond. This summary here can be changed to depict how right or left-leaning sources frame the story. I can scroll down here and compare the headlines. For example, Daily News Egypt has a different take on the matter than the Associated Press. Curiously, left-wing sources cover the story several times more often than the right-wing ones. I can see who finances each source and where the media source is based at. Ground News uses bias and factuality ratings based on three independent news monitoring organizations. At home, I usually use the Ground News app on my phone. At work, I check out Ground News via web browser. As always, if you go to ground.news slash binkov, you can check it out for yourself. Using the QR code or my link below the video, you can get 40% off unlimited access for a month and stay fully informed. Anyway, Israeli Air Force also uses ROCKS, a medium-sized ballistic missile. 
Its specifications are estimated, but they might indicate well over 200 miles of range, possibly even reaching 400. Other Israeli-launched missiles and bombs are of much shorter reach. Delilah is a very small cruise missile with a tiny warhead. Rampage is a rocket originally designed for a multiple launch rocket system, a ground launcher, later modified for aircraft carriage. It too lacks a big warhead. Both weapons might plausibly max out to some 160 miles in range. Of the two, the Rampage might make a bit more sense for an attack. Some promo materials list just 100 miles range for Rampage, but its plausible actual range is higher. There's the old baseline Popeye missile as well, but at 60 plus miles, it likely lacks range to be very useful. It's a large, slow missile, so it's likely not so many could be carried and launched at once. Similar issue besets the Spice 1000 glide bomb, though it may offer somewhat longer range. Those are unlike the small diameter bomb, which is also slow but much more compact. A dozen F-16s that might carry 24 Popeyes could instead carry 96 small diameter bombs, potentially overwhelming Iranian air defenses locally. Indeed, since the year 2000, Israel has procured quite a few bombs from the US, according to CIPRI's weapons transfer database. Figures pertain to total orders. Of course, many may have been used so far, but it's still likely Israel has at least half of the numbers shown, plus its domestic-made bombs. SDBs are interesting as their range is decentish at 70 miles. Another interesting weapon is the huge GBU-28 bomb. That's an almost two-ton bunker buster. Usually one such bomb is carried centerline by the F-15. While such a bomb is designed to penetrate into hardened subterranean facilities, its range is poor. So those F-15s would have to fly halfway into Iran to reach most of the nuclear-related facilities, if those are chosen targets which is far from likely. Going so deep into Iran, heavily laden and slow, such planes might be very vulnerable, though Iran lacks the numbers of high-end SAM systems to close off entrances into its country. It's likely its most potent SAM batteries are concentrated around only some of the many important locations. Which is why Israel might be quite likely to limit itself to F-35 usage, if it's gonna decide to fly inside Iran proper. The F-35 is stealthy, so it might have better chances of not being targeted during a short incursion. While large weapons can't fit inside the F-35 and keep it stealthy, the small diameter bombs can, adding a bit more reach. Sure, F-15I and F-16I could add even a bit more range, but as they're not stealthy, they're not as good candidates for deeper incursions into Iran. Non-stealthy jets could also be used, but it depends on whether Israel accepts the higher risk of losing some planes to Iranian defenses. The US Air Force credited the F-35 with some 770 miles of combat radius with two JDAMs. Basically, even without in-air refueling, Israeli F-35s would be able to reach Iran's borders, and possibly go a bit further inside, depending on specifics. Realistically, Israel would use at least a little bit of in-air refueling to nudge the range a bit more and give itself more options on exact ingress routes. But flying tankers over Saudi Arabia or Jordan might mean those countries would need to give consent. The US went on the record saying it would, quote, not participate in any Israeli response. Whether that means no tanker support is unknown. Syria doesn't control its airspace and the Israeli Air Force has often flown over Syria. However, if Israel wishes to make the attack as effective as possible and not telegraph it like Iran did, it would not want to fly high over Syria, especially not with tanker aircraft. Such in-air refueling ops would likely be observed and reported to Iran early, if by no one else than by Russian radars in Syria, which are present in a few air bases there. A Jordan might allow overflights as it helped defend Israel on the 13th. Saudi Arabia, while neutral, dislikes Iran. It's not known if it would look the other way if Israel refueled some planes in the air over its territory. When it comes to non-air-launched weapons, Israel has fewer options. It doesn't seem to rely much on long-range so-called drones like Iran does. That's because such drones, in reality propeller-driven missiles, are slow and very vulnerable. Iran's failure to penetrate inside Israel using such drones shows that. Israel also doesn't rely on small to medium ballistic missiles all that much. Sure, it probably has the LoRa system, a ballistic missile. Its use was alleged in Syria at times. But those are 250-mile weapons, far inadequate to reach Iran. 
The one ballistic missile that the Israel could use is the huge Jericho missile. Those are the missiles usually carrying nuclear warheads, fired from silos. Not much is known about them, but Jericho 3, the latest variant, likely has a range exceeding 3000 miles. While it's not known if Israel really has some Jerichos equipped with conventional warheads, it's a plausible option. Jericho's 3 size likely means a 1 ton warhead is very doable. The US toyed with the idea of using its big Trident ICBMs for conventional strikes. While that may be an issue against Russia or China, as those countries might think they're under a nuclear attack, if Israel chooses to go after Iran with some Jerichos, there wouldn't be anything for Iran to do about it anyway. Interception of such a very fast ballistic missile is very likely beyond Iran's capabilities right now. The only issue there is, is that there might not be many Jerichos available. Jerichos are super expensive. Given that the nuclear arsenal is plausibly only a few dozen missiles, the specialized conventional variant is likely even less numerous, if it exists. If the nature of Israel's attack is a show of force, rather than a serious attack meant to do widespread damage, then Israel might opt for literally just a couple of such missiles. Lastly, a very distinct possibility is that Israel currently has a submarine in the Indian Ocean, or one on its way there. While rarely, their subs have at times crossed the Suez Canal. Though it seems plausible Iran would be able to track such canal crossings even if later on it might not be able to shadow the submarine. Egypt, for example, did approve of Israeli submarine crossing back in 2020. It's plausible Iran has enough spies in Egypt to roughly track such crossings. Being conventional, Israeli subs simply lack endurance and speed to go all the way around Africa effectively. It would literally take them a month and a half to do it. Firing turbo Popeye cruise missiles from submarines gives Israel additional options though. Indian Ocean launch means the eastern part of the country could be threatened as well. Those submarines don't really carry many missiles, likely up to 16. So the Indian Ocean launch with two subs is not likely to have more than double that figure, given the logistical issues. The issue with cruise missiles, however, is that they're vulnerable. They're slow, easy targets, which was shown both in Ukraine repeatedly and now recently when Iran's cruise missiles failed against Israel so using those alone might not have the desired effect. Ultimately, Israel has several options of striking Iran. It all depends on how serious Israel is gonna be. If content with not matching the numbers of missiles launched by Iran on the April 13th, Israel could very well strike with missiles alone, not even risking going close to Iran's borders with aircraft. But it's questionable if that would leave the desired mark on Iran. Using aircraft as well, and almost reaching Iran's borders, perhaps even going over to launch many more smaller munitions, that might leave a bigger mark. And remember, Binkov may talk about war, but only real peace can bring us all together.